I want to talk to you today about molecules. They're very, very small. How small? Well, let me give you a bit of an idea. I have a ball here. Imagine that this were a molecule, one molecule. I'm going to take a breath, not even a big breath. I've inhaled a lot of molecules, mostly oxygen, nitrogen, argon, and a whole collage of others. Imagine that one of those molecules was the size of this ball. What would be the volume of balls represented by all the molecules that I just inhaled? Believe it or not, it would be the volume of the Earth filled with these balls. That's how many molecules there are in a single breath. And in fact, every time I take a breath, I'm inhaling a few molecules that were exhaled by Albert Einstein, Napoleon, or anyone else you care to choose in history. Because of course, there's overall mixing in the atmosphere. Why do I bring this up? Because of course, what we're really interested in is what we're taking in in terms of the coronavirus with each breath. And every breath we take, we will take in some because there is some out there. Is it enough to infect us? That's an interesting question. And of course, many people are asking this question. Many researchers are looking into it. I think when we're outdoors, there is such dilution that I don't think that there is a significant risk. There may be if you're walking along and you meet someone and you start chatting with them and you cough in their face or they cough in your face, yes. But just passing someone on the street is not going to do it. Why not? Because we have to have enough of the virus inhaled in order to cause a problem. And that takes time. There's just like with toxicology, it's a question of how dangerous something is and the time that we are exposed to it. So if we're not exposed to a very long time, there's not going to be an infective dose. Indoors is a very different story. This is where we get some of the scary data. We heard the classic story of that choir practice, uh, which took place in the state of Washington. And one infected person was able to infect about 40 others, even though it was in a very large room. So obviously the virus was transmitted through the air. So indoors is a very, very different story. We see that there, there's infection that occurs in meatpacking plants. We see it in telephone call answering services. We see it in, in things like Amazon warehouses. So indoors, I think, is where we really have to be careful. And that's why wearing of a mask indoors is a good idea as long as you are in a space where there is not much air circulation and where there are a lot of people. There it makes sense to wear a mask. But I want to leave you with one comforting little idea. Uh, the Diamond Princess, which is the ship that became a classic because 14 days of quarantine and there were about 600 people infected on that ship. But the fact is that those infections were traced and none of that happened through the ventilation shaft. It didn't go via air conditioning. So that is a pretty comforting kind of thing. Uh, eventually we will get out of this mess. There will be some treatments, there will be some vaccines that are available. But don't hold your breath. Take a deep breath. Ah, I've just inhaled some uh, molecules from uh, Marilyn Monroe's perfume, also from Donald Trump's sweat. So in fact, molecules are very small.